I took my freshman outside to do mouse houses today. Some of you will remember that. I know, I changed the schedule. The mouse was really nice, but... Someone move this, it's like too close. There we go. Are you done? First one. Oh. I have a friend who's already offered me to go to his house in 2045 in Florida. Nice. So, yeah. Because he drove, he's from Ohio and he moved to Florida. And they at la the last minute decided to drive up here. He's like, I would never regret driving up here. Like, I would never regret driving to see another total solar eclipse. Like, yeah. just to see that again would be really cool. First one, is this what you had for magnesium? Yes. Technically, you don't need the number in here, but I like to put it, um, just so it keeps, keeps track of my electrons. Second one, look good? Mm -hmm. Yes. Third one, positive charge means what did you, what did you do? Electron. Lost an electron. And then a negative charge means you uh, gained. Oh, yeah. You gained. Are we good with those? No. For the next part, it says in the box on the right, draw a diagram of a carbon atom showing protons, neutrons, and electrons. Showing protons, neutrons, and electrons. This is not your freshman Bohr model. So I want you to write out carbon's electron configuration, which is what? 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. This is what that would technically look like. There technically would be two electrons on the first level. That's your 1s2, right? Mm -hmm. The next level would be two electrons on the second level, 2s2. And then the last one would be your 2p2. So that's kind of a weird one. I don't think you'd, you're not gonna have to draw a Bohr model on the test, but it's just good to think about. And if you ever look like on the periodic table, those numbers at the, on the right-hand side, two goes on the first level, two go on the second level, eight go on the third level. So that's the two, two. Freshman, you learn two, eight, eight, two, but it's really two, two, eight, two, eight, eight, two, eight, eight, 18, all that stuff. Okay. How many energy levels are found in a chlorine atom? What would you say for that? How many energy levels? Three. Because you have your 1s2, you have your 2s2, 2p6, and you have your 3s2 and your 3p. So I'd say three. I'd say three. Circle the correct word. Each electron in the atom has the different ionization energy. Because you know some are spinning up, some are spinning down, some are paired, some are not paired. Electrons in the atom are of two types. Inner electrons, also called the core, and the outer electrons called the valence. Core electrons have a higher ionization energy. Why? Because they're closer to the nucleus. Closer to the nucleus, which means we're about to talk about what? Shielding. Trends. Flip the page. We're about to talk about trends. So let's talk about trends. Atomic radius, when going left to right on the periodic table, how would you describe that? What happens to atomic radius? Describe how shielding effect is involved in these periodic trends. So as I'm moving left to right. No, it's bigger. No, it, 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 no, because shielding is the same. Yeah. Moving left to right. Oh, we're talking about shielding. Shielding. Oh. Describe how the shielding effect is involved in these periodic trends. Agreed? Yeah. When you're going top to bottom, what's happening to my shielding? It's increasing. It's increasing. 
So as I'm moving left to right, the shielding's staying the same, but what is increasing? Your what? Number of protons. Your number of protons slash core charge is going up, right? Yes? Therefore, what's happening to your atomic radius as you move to the right on the periodic table? It's getting smaller. Because same amount of shielding, more pull. This way, as I'm moving down, what's happening to my core charge? Core charge is constant. Core charge is the same. So as I'm adding more shielding and I have the same core charge, what's happening to my size as I'm going down? <coughs> Increasing. Increasing. Ionization energy. As I move left to right, my shielding is doing what? Staying the same, my, which means, what is ionization energy? The energy required to remove an electron. So as my shielding is staying the same, and as the number of protons is going up, is it going to be easier or harder to remove an electron? Harder. Therefore, ionization energy is going up. Yes. So ionization energy is increasing as you move left to right. As I move down, once again, my shielding is increasing. Core charge is the same. So what happens to my ionization energy as I move down? Yes. So as I move down, ionization energy is decreasing. Ionization energy is decreasing, which is why francium is the most reactive metal on the periodic table, right? Largest radius. Same core charge. It very, 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 very much wants to give away an electron. Low ionization, ionization energy. Electronegativity is the what? Desire for an electron, right? So it's going to be the exact opposite. Shielding is the same as I go across. My number of protons is going up as I go across. So my electronegativity is doing what as I go across? As I'm going across, it's increasing, right? So my electronegativity, you guys see what I just did there? E negativity. <coughs> e negativity is increasing. Yeah, that was very, very shorthand. Actually, E negative. I think I have, actually, that's an E negativity. Whatever, you guys know what it is. You guys know what it is. Here, as I'm going down, my shielding is increasing. So my core charge, electronegativity, is the same. It would have been cool to be at the Guardians game and see the Eclipse. I think that would have been cool. Yeah, opening, opening day, yeah. Core charge is what is the Core charge, it's, 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 a, it's the same as the group number, right? Yeah. Remember how we did that big old packet? We essentially said, if it's, there's one valence electron, it's a core charge of one. It's just saying that the inner shell compared to the outer shell, that's, it's that ratio. Okay, so core charge is the same. As I move down, do they have a large desire for electrons? No. So my electronegativity, it should be my E negativity is going to do what? Decrease. Because remember, these trends are the same, just described different, right? The trend on ionization energy and, yeah, yeah. The trend for ionization energy and electric negativity is the same, just described in a different way. Okay, arrange the following elements based on your knowledge of periodic trends. So C, R, K, B, R, K, R. Number one, increasing atomic radius, do it. So, small to big.
this first one's kind of tricky, I think. Let's just do number one first. It says increasing atomic radius, so yeah. What was your smallest for number one? KR. I agree with KR. Next. BR. Then what? CR and then? Okay, never mind. That wasn't hard. You guys got it. Okay, do the next one. Decreasing ionization energy. I hate it when they do decreasing. Just makes it sound harder. Have to think a little bit backwards. Did anyone's eyes still hurt just a little bit after the eclipse? I'd like a headache after. Mine did. No, I, I did everything right. No? Okay. She what? <laughs> you guys got this one. Highest ionization energy, what'd you say? What? KR. <laughs> Next is? BR. Next is? It was the same, right? Yeah. Okay. What about increasing electronegativity? How is this going to be ordered? I said KR, KCR. I said KCR, That's going to be the opposite. Yeah. Right? It should be K, CR, BR, KR. Okay, what are we talking about over here? What's this? <laughs> Coulomb's Law, right? This is Coulomb's Law. Remember how there was distance and charge? Yes? I disagree with you. Why? No, KR doesn't want any. Yeah, I know, but technically if it did, it would still have the, it would still, don't do it based off of it being a noble gas. It's the trend it's talking about. Yeah. You're right, it doesn't want any, but if it could, it would still want them the most because it, it's the smallest with the most protons. Um, answer the questions um, using these particles on the right labeled A to E. Coulomb's Law is on the last page. Remember this? This? Coulomb's Law, we talked about it a whole bunch of times. Okay. All right, that's fine. We're going to talk about it. <clears throat> Which pair of charged particles are the most attractive? Which means they want to get closest to each other. You have to actually do a little bit of math. You can't just tell. So Coulomb's Law is this. So charge times charge divided by R squared. Which ones can you immediately eliminate from this one? Uh, same charges. Same charges. So B and C are gone. So it's just A, D, or E. If you were doing this without a calculator or doing quick math, which one would you most likely eliminate next? E. Why? It's the farthest radius. That's also correct. So now you're down to A or E. Oh, yeah, D is also two positives. So now it's literally just A or E. So now you just solve it. A, 2 times 1 is 2 divided by 4 is half. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 divided by 9 is a third. Right? Two thirds. Thank you. 
Which one's bigger? E. Hi. Just want to share eighth graders were not impressed by the eclipse. That's ridiculous. Were you impressed by the eclipse? Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you go to the opposite end of the spectrum here. <laughs> All right, this is AP Chem seniors. I, I just need to check with other people. And junior. Just... And junior. Singular. Yes. Singular. Singular. Blown away. Oh, thought it was amazing. I thought it was super cool. I thought it was cool. Was just like, it didn't get dark. <laughs> it didn't get dark. But there was a 360 degree. Dark. But it was a 360 degree um, sunset. If you went, did anybody go in their house before totality and see how dark it was in your house? It was dark. I, did you see the prominence? I mean, it was yes. like shooting out of the sun. Yeah, that solar flare on the lower left was Anyways. amazing. <laughs> We loved it. I have one freshman who hasn't seen it. She was taking a shower. So. Most repulsive. What'd you guys say? D? Are those still way same charges? No, repulsive. So uh, these have already been repelled, right? If you think yeah, about it. But, but they've already repelled. If you're going to do the math, it's going to, it's going to be C. First of all, they're the closest. C is 1. One divided by 1 is what? 1. D? This would be 9 divided by 16. That's way less than 1. It's C. If the distance between valence electrons and nucleus were doubled, what would happen to the force? R. If R is doubled, it's going to decrease to what? Yeah. Decrease to one fourth the charge. Decrease to one fourth. Do you guys remember photo electron spectroscopy? Yes. Good, because that's the next page. Photo electron spectroscopy. Do you guys remember me rolling the, the balls down the ramp? Right? And then the one stuck because that was the trick magnet underneath. Did I do that? No. Yes. Yes, I did. I rolled like the wooden ball and then I showed how these graphs were made. And then I rolled the marble, and then like they started curving. But there was a magnet underneath, and I showed how you made this graph. Oh no, that that wasn't this graph. That was actually um, that wasn't this graph. That was uh, percent abundance. No, it was this. It was mass spectrometry. That was this. That was this. Sorry, it was this. You guys are confusing me. It was this. Study the photoelectron spectrum to the right. What's the name of this element? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p, this has to be aluminum, yes, wait a second, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1, that's aluminum, yeah. That's aluminum. <laughs> Given the following electron configuration, construct the photoelectron spectrum and identify the element. So here we go. Doesn't really matter how you draw it. Just 1s2. So the first one has to be go up to 2, right? 2s2 has to be the same height. 2p6 has to be all the way up to 6. 3s2, and then 3p4 has to touch 4. What element is that? Sulfur. Sulfur. Where is the nucleus on each one of these graphs? No. That was the nucleus, right? Because the energy is going what as I get far from the nucleus? Down, because it's easier to remove an electron. Easier to remove an electron. Okay, flip it. That was an easy page. That was easy. What? I think I have one. I used to. That was easy. It still works. It still works.
All right, here we go. Oh, we just talked about this. Ionization energy, left to right, up or down? Up. Top to bottom. Down. Electronegativity increases. And if you want to put excluding noble gases, you can, but in general. Top to bottom, down, same trend. Atomic radius, as it go left to right, smaller. Radius, it does get smaller. We're not talking about shielding. Top to bottom is going to get larger. Okay. Explain each of these trends in terms of atomic structure. Structure. I feel like we've already done this. Um, I mean, do we need to do that again? No. Okay, let's skip it. We've already done it. We've already talked about all of those trends in terms of charge, shielding. ZF, that's just your charge of the... ZF is a core charge. Same thing. Why does ionization energy go up left to right? Like, technically, wouldn't it stop at, like, carbon? No, Because as I'm going to the right... My ionization energy is energy required to remove an electron, right? Oh, I'm dumb. Okay, you're not dumb. You're not dumb. You are not dumb. All right, flip the page. Okay. Take a second and do the top three of this row. Top three of this row. Was anybody not here on Thursday or Friday? Oh, it was just Tyler. Guys, do you see the amazing board I made over there for this week? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe the lab aides made it. That's obviously not my handwriting or my artwork. It was Emily and Karen. You guys can expect that for the next three weeks. I'll bring you a little bit of extra joy. It brought me some joy. Oh yeah, next week's a three day week. Don't plan, I will tell you this, don't plan on doing nothing for AP Chem or two days off. I'm just letting you know now. So, we just can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. You will most likely, um, you'll probably just have a whole one of these to do. And I'll like upload the key. I'm just letting you know. You can't stop. All right. I have one balanced electron, 10 core electrons. What's my name? Sodium. How, so that means that 11 minus 10 is what? Which my core charge for this would be one. You guys remember how we did that? Yes. Yeah, the big old packet. My valence electrons are located in a 3P. I'm the smallest element in this period. What's my name and group number? Argon. Group number 18. I have the lowest ionization elect I'm sorry, the lowest electronegativity. I have the lowest ionization energy. I'm never found free in nature. What's my name? Francium. It's like basically or radioactive. Basically radioactive. Okay, do your second row. Or did you guys already do it? Okay.
Did anyone's parents not get to see the eclipse? Like, were they working? My dad was working, but he went outside because he was at a doctor's office and they couldn't give appointments away for free. They actually tried. Oh, we mean to try and like, get somebody scheduled for that yeah. time? That one, this first one kind of gives it away, right? Right. Iron? Yeah. Group 14, our AR is less than germanium. What are our names and period numbers? Carbon and silicon. Carbon is what period? Yeah. Silicon is period? Three. three. I have an oxidation number of negative three. I have the lowest ionization energy in my group. What's my name? This is tricky. Any other guesses? Nitrogen. Pull out your pair of table with the names. Can I see one of yours with the names? Can I see someone's blue? I do not have a blue. I actually don't know if you have this on your periodic table. I would have to look up. It's Moscovinium. Right, come on, man. <laughs> what is the atomic number of that? What does this man contribute to society? Do you think it is a name on that element? Did he discover it? Probably. I'm guessing. Or is it like Moscow? Yeah. It's 115. So 115, yep. you would have to figure out group 15, right? You knew it had to be group 15 because the negative three, yeah. the one at the bottom. UUP actually has a name now. So did someone say UUP? Yeah. Yeah. Nice, you were right. Element 115. Element 115. Why do members of the same group on the periodic table form similar compounds? Of uh, the same valence electrons. Same valence electrons. Which of the following elements will bond one to one ratio? Calcium, potassium, or aluminum? Potassium. Potassium has. No, which two of these will bond together in a one to one ratio? Oh, sorry. Bond with oxygen. So, which ones? CA. Anything else? No, because calcium has a what charge? Plus two. Oxygen has a minus two. So, it's a plus two, a minus two. That's a perfect match. Given the following formula, SRCl2, explain how this formula is derived. Justify your answer using the location of elements on the periodic table. Well, how is this derived? Strontium has a plus two. Strontium is in group two, right? Therefore, it's a plus two. Yes? Steel has a minus one. Chlorine is a minus one. And you need two chlorine to balance out the charges. Don't say like crisscross, okay? You need two chlorine to give charge of compound overall zero, overall zero. That is unit one.